Hey everybody, welcome to This Week in People. I'm your host, Lars Schmidt, and as always, This Week in People is supported by our friends at PIN, the internal communications tool for the distributed workforce. Um, like all This Weeks in People, all of the articles I'm about to walk you through, you can find the URLs in the show notes, and so I definitely recommend you clicking those to go a little deeper. So, let's dig right in. Um, the theme of this uh, week's episode, which is the theme of a lot of our lives in HR right now, is around considerations around hybrid and remote. And so this is a piece in the Wall Street Journal that really gets into some of the politics of remote, particularly as you're coordinating who goes into an office, who does not, um, how does that cascade up and down different levels of seniority. So some interesting points to ponder in that article, as well as this article in Forbes, by Kara Breton Alamo uh, over at Udemy uh, and gets into some really interesting um, you know, core points to be considering uh, as you're evaluating your both return to workplace plans and your hybrid structures. And so two good uh, reference articles for you as you're navigating those conversations internally. Um, and if you're doing so, a cautionary tale from Google. So Google uh, you know, they've made some, you know, some commitments around hybrid that's vacillated a little bit over the last couple of months, but they took a little heat uh, this uh, past week as one of their key executives announced that uh, while people are being, uh, you know, asked to come back in the office, he's actually pretty comfortable in New Zealand and uh, is looking to stay there. So I think, again, just another kind of reminder of having some consistency in different standards and if that consistency does not quite apply to uh, even long-standing very senior executives uh, you might get a little backlash from that so uh, this article will give you a little bit more detail on that backstory um, this is a really great piece on how Dropbox is imagining their what they're calling studios. So you know they've announced a uh, a hybrid work model. Uh, nobody's going to be forced to go in an office, but they are going to have studios in different major cities across the U.S. that employees can go into and spend time. And it really gets into uh, the drivers of creating spaces for community and collaboration, but not necessarily work. Um, and so I think as we start to see some of these offices being redesigned. Uh, in this new kind of um, hybrid flex work structure, we're gonna see more of these types of meeting spaces designed around community collaboration and connection, but also transiency. Uh, you know, George LaRock is one of my favorite HR tech analysts. He's my go-to resource for all things uh, HR tech, in particularly as a really good finger on the pulse of venture capital being poured into the space and there is a lot of it. There is a lot of it. Uh, looking at Q2 alone, there was $4.9 billion spread across 91 investments in the work tech space just this past quarter. Uh, and so the numbers are staggering. Uh, he has a great report. Uh, it's free. You can access it in the links in the uh, show notes here. But he really breaks down the data across sector uh, geography um, and, and things like that to help you get a sense of where this money is going. But if you are now thinking about creating that uh, work tech startup, now might be a pretty good time to uh, to take that leap just based on the amount of venture capital that's being poured into the space. So again, a breakdown quarterly and just look at this year over year over the past several years trends in terms of um, how it's expanding. You know, we've already outpaced all of the past three years in two quarters. So buckle up uh, out there. And so for all of you HR leaders uh, who are already trying to keep up with all of the uh, HR technology options at your disposal these days, yeah, that's not gonna change anytime soon. You're gonna continue to need to keep up and there's gonna be a lot more. So hopefully, uh, you know, with all the changes and complexity that's happening in our field, we'll have some new tools to help support that. Um, and the last article I want to share here is uh, a piece from Jess Mays. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Jess Hayes. She wrote, uh, wrote a piece. She's the now COO, uh, was CPO for Whereby. And I've always appreciated her thinking and approach to all things people. And this piece is no example, uh, no exception. She talks about thinking about people ops as a product and actually gets into some spaces around that. So definitely worth your time 
worth a read. And uh, next time I bring you her articles, which I will, I will not butcher your last name. So sorry, Jess. Um, TikTok. Who's on TikTok? Are your recruiters on TikTok? Because TikTok resumes are apparently a thing now. Um, yeah, I don't know if uh, you need to be embracing a TikTok resume strategy, but they do exist and you should know that they exist and maybe you will see them at some point in the future. Um, so yeah, TikTok. Okay, moving on. Um, this is another piece, just an interesting uh, thing that I noted from Comsor. Comsor is a, a really powerful new community management platform. Um, and they create, you know, referral bonuses are nothing new. We've all seen them, we've all used them, um, but this is actually oriented a bit of a different way. If you help them identify somebody who they hire, they will make a donation, um, you know, in your name to a local organization that you support. So interesting, I, I'd like to check in with them a couple of months down the road to see um, how this actually impacted referrals, but just another creative way of soliciting feedback particularly in this market, which you all know is on fire. So um, with that, uh, I did formally announce this week that the new Redefining HR Accelerator community is now open and available. So this post gets into a bit more about how the community came to be, how I'm organizing it, and really intentionally building a space that will serve as a um, growth and support catalyst for modern HR leaders and practitioners. So you can learn more in this post, and if that sounds like something that would be additive in your own career, I think it will, I'm biased of course, uh, you can join at the link in the bottom of the post. And before we wrap up today's episode, uh, I'm excited that the next week, Season six of the Redefining HR podcast will kick off. So some incredible guests lined up for this season. This season is also expanding to video. So uh, each episode will have a blog write up, an audio version and a video version. So whatever you're into, we've got you covered. So I'm gonna close out this episode of This Week in People with a preview, a trailer for the upcoming Redefining HR podcast. And I will see you all next week. I'll see you on Monday with this uh, debut episode of the podcast. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And here's a sneak peek at season six of the podcast.